Kay with Crafting Cousins. We're so excited you decided to stop by our channel today. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, Trisha and I thank you so much. Today, we have three brand new projects that are all about the 4th of July and Independence Day. So grab your favorite summer beverage and let's craft, y'all. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's about six and a half inches by 12 inches or so for the measurements. It all has this twine at the top that you can easily take out and reuse. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to reuse it. I'm going to be using a few of these red, white, and blue beads that came in this wooden bead decor from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using quite a bit of this ribbon, but there was a lot left. I got it at Michael's. It comes in a package for $10, but Sunday when I got it, they were running it for 50% off. So $5 for all of this ribbon is a good deal. I'm going to be using these wooden letters that I got at Hobby Lobby when they were 50% off. So it's about $5 and there's at least four of each of the letters and they're about one and a quarter inches tall. I will be using three of these wooden stars. They come in a package of six and I got them at Walmart and I don't think they were very expensive at all. I will be using some white Waverly chalk paint as well as some chalk paint from Folk Art that is in the colors Imperial and Nautical Blue. And finally, some E6000 and my hot glue gun. So the first thing I'm going to do is place in a piece of just normal copy paper in the bottom. Use a little painter's tape to hold it in place so that we can easily paint it. And then I'm just going to come in with the red chalk paint and I'm going to paint all of the inside edges, outside edges, and the front. And I'm happy to report that this only took one good coat. And while we have our brush wet and our paint out, we'll go ahead and paint the front and the sides of the S also. I'm going to be using the white Waverly chalk paint on the edges and the front of all three stars, so they will all be white. You could also paint them silver if you prefer, but I'm keeping my colors a little bit muted. And then for the U and the A, we'll give those a really good coat on the edges and the front with the blue paint, which is called nautical. For my letters, I'm first going to apply them to the stars now that they are dry and center them as best I can. But y'all, I did mess up on that U just a little bit. And I gave those a couple of hours to dry to make sure they were nice and in place. And then I'm going to place on first the U and the A because I'm coming in about an eighth of an inch at the top from that point and an eighth of an inch from the side from the second point. And then once we get it like we want it, I will turn it around and then place hot glue on the back of the S and then we'll place it about an eighth of an inch from the bottom. So you want it centered also between there as much as you can. So the first thing I did was remove all of the ribbon from their package and separate them into three piles by color. And then I'm going to go in and choose first the widest or the most interesting, the ones that had patterns that I liked and so forth. And I'm going to cut each piece in half. So each piece of ribbon will give you two onto your sign because these pieces were pretty long. They must have been at least 40 inches long. And remember, there were 50 pieces in that package, even though some admittedly were very thin, but not a lot. So I think that's a good deal for $5. Then you want to place something under your sign. I just have a little piece of wax paper here that I had been painting on, and I'm going to protect my work surface as I use my hot glue gun to place these on. I'm going to make sure each time that I turn the correct pattern to the front because that's the side that we'll be showing. And for some of the patterns, they are directional, which means if you don't want your hearts to be upside down and so forth, you have to make sure each time that you look at that ribbon. And I'm just doing a red, white, and blue pattern. As I finished up, I ended exactly on the blue. Also, if you want yours to be thicker, all you have to do is come in. Once you place this first line across, put some more ribbon in between on the back. So just glue it right on top. And you notice each time I'm sort of lining mine up, putting just a little over an inch onto my frame back here. And therefore, I didn't have a lot to cut off at the end. So these were cut pretty evenly. 
Now I'm going to go in with this decoration and take off some of the beads. I still will have plenty to use in another project. I think I ended up using about three of each color. You want to make sure you use an even amount. And I'm going to go ahead and place in my twine back into the back. It just slides right through. And then I will place on the rest of the beads and then place back on my piece into the hole on the other side. And that held it nicely. You see me use one extra on this film, but when I hung it, I realized I did not have an even number and I did take one of the blue beads off at the end. And that's pretty much it for this project. I love how mine turned out, but you could always make it with even more ribbon. We want to invite you to come with us on a crafty cruise getaway with four other YouTube channels. You can enjoy beaches and sand and all of the onboard ship amenities and spend time with six different YouTube crafters in classes curated just for you. It is going to be a blast, but space is very limited and it is going quickly. Make sure you go to the website www.craftycruisegetaway.com for all of the information. There will also be a link in the description box below. Can't wait to meet you there. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we are going to use this pattern that I blew up, printed out, cut and tape together. Now I will put a link to this down below if you would like to have a copy for yours and it is already blown up. All you have to do is print it out, cut it out and tape it together. Some duck cloth, you could also use drop cloth or even burlap for this. Some acrylic paint in red, white and blue. Some grocery bags for stuffing some carbon paper. Now I got mine from Office Depot about six years ago. You can also get this on Amazon. This stuff seems to last forever. Some twine and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So I have been making quite a few of these lately and I know I have shown y'all several in the last few videos, but I'm getting ready for a craft show and I'm going to be selling these at the craft show. They're a great seller and y'all, they cost about $2 each to make and you can sell them for anywhere from 20 to 25 and for the big ones, you might could even do 30. Now when I make my pattern, I want it to be about 22 to 24 inches at its widest or longest point. So that's what I blow it up to. I like to use simple patterns. It gives you room for stuffing and it's easier to work with. So I find, I figure out what I want to do and I either sketch out or I find an SVG for it. I pull it into Word and I blow it up to the size that I want it. Then I just kind of move it around in my document and I save the different areas as PDFs and then I can print it all out and I cut it and tape it together. Now that may sound like a lot of work, but I've done this for you. So if you're interested in any of the projects I've done lately, I've already blown them up and I've included links in each video so that you can go and all you have to do is print it off. Now we're going to tape this together. I like to put quite a bit of tape on mine because I use my patterns over and over since I am making these for sale. Once you get your pattern made, I double my cloth and then I lay my pattern down on top of it and I trace around it with either a pencil or a pen. Now you see, I just hold mine with my hand, but you can also pin it with straight pins if you're worried that it's going to slip around. Then all we have to do is cut it out. Now I prefer this duck cloth or a drop cloth because it paints so much easier than burlap, but you can do it with burlap. A lot of people use burlap for these, but it has a smell it unravels e easy and I don't like how it paints now this one is pretty detailed most of the ones I do I can either just kind of sketch out my boundaries or 
just go ahead and paint I mean some of them are just that simple but this one had all those stars on it and I wanted my stripes to be the same width and the same distance apart so I went ahead and I did my pattern so those were included now to be able to get that pattern onto my duck cloth I'm using carbon paper or copy or paper or uh, whatever you want to call it I stick it under my pattern laying it on top of my fabric and then I just trace over it and it's going to transfer all of those lines onto my project so that I can easily paint it and be able to keep all those dimensions now we get to paint I always use acrylic paint I will say I did a couple a few years back where I used chalk paint and chalk paint when it gets wet has a tendency to run but once acrylic paint completely dries it does not do that it's much better on your porch and it's kind of weatherproof now my porch is covered so you know that helps as well now for the stars they were a little tricky I did have to go into each one but just take your time you'll get there then I came back and I painted my stripes the white ones and I did that I know this fabric's white but this is a little bit brighter and I also had to touch up that mistake I made when I touched the blue paint onto one of my stripes this worked out perfectly now we're going to let that completely dry and then I'm going to come back in with my red acrylic paint and I'm just going to finish up my stripes y'all I love doing these they're so cathartic you can just kind of relax put on some music put on your favorite youtuber and listen to them while you're doing it and the possibilities are just endless now for this I have to apologize to you I was making so many of these that I wasn't paying attention to my camera and I ran out of space so it didn't record me putting the cross together but the process is exactly the same when you're making these stuffed hangers all you do once your paint is completely dry is lay out your bottom then you're going to put your top on and use hot glue and go right along those seams now you want to make sure you get a good amount in there and you press it down well and it's going to stick and it will not come apart now make sure you leave an opening so that you can put your bags in there to stuff it don't do it all the way around now once you get that done we're going to come in and we're going to stuff it and i love using old grocery bags for this i keep them for this purpose it's a great way to recycle they don't hold water like cotton stuffing does and they're just perfect for this now i don't make mine too thick i just like to kind of make it pop up make it 3d but you do yours however you want to then we're just going to close up that opening with some more hot glue and that part is finished to make a hanger for this I just take some twine and I figure out where it needs to go to make it hang the way I want it to I put it into a darning needle pull it through the back tie a knot leaving a loop and that gives us a hanger and this project is complete Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, it's going to be quick and simple. I'm going to be reusing this metal sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. It had a truck attached to the bottom and I used it on a wreath, I think about two years ago. But guess what? They still sell them this year. I'm going to use one of these wooden signs that I got from Timu in a haul. They're about four and a half inches by six and a half inches. I don't know if they still sell them. I don't think the link works any longer. I'm going to be using some ribbon, of course. I have this one and a half inch ribbon and this thin ribbon. They both came from Michael's and the thicker one was on sale for 50% off Sunday. I'm going to be using one of these napkins that I got in a package at the Dollar Tree and you want to make sure that you separate it so that it is one ply. 
I'm also going to be using some white Waverly chalk paint and finally some Mod Podge and some floral wire. To start this project I'm going to fill in these holes that are on the little wooden plaques. You can use hot glue like I did and just scrape off the excess, maybe give it a good sanding if you need it, or you can use some type of filler. And then I'm going to come in with the white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to paint all of the edges and the front so that the wood will not show through on my napkin. And once everything is completely dry, I'm going to first fit my napkin and I decided that I wanted it to be close to the edge and fold over about an inch at the top. And then I'm going to apply a light coat of Mod Podge. I'll take some saran wrap, place it on top and use my brayer to get out all the bubbles. And then you want to let that completely dry and kind of harden. I'm going to trim up the edges first of all with my scissors, just giving it a rough cut. And then I'll apply another coat of Mod Podge on the top of my piece. I didn't let it completely dry. It is still wet and I'm going to use my lighter and come in and just kind of burn off the edges all the way around. Sometimes it works perfectly on the napkins from the Dollar Tree and sometimes you have a little more difficulty with it. This one I found to be a little more difficult because it even flamed up blue which was kind of weird when I was working on the blue. So I'm not sure what kind of toxic chemical was in there. So you might want to be careful with that and make sure your room is ventilated and you have something metal under your pan to catch your piece in case it does flame up. And for the bow it's going to be really simple. I am going to cut off 20 inches folded in the middle, dovetail the ends. I will take a piece of this floral wire, it is just lightweight from the Dollar Tree, pinch it in the middle and then bring over each side about the same amount. Once you get it like you want it, you want to secure it with that floral wire. And then I'm going to take the thin ribbon and tie around the floral wire and just hide everything. And then of course I'm going to use a little hot glue in the back to make sure it's nice and secure. And to reuse this metal sign I'm going to cut off that price tag and then I'm going to come in and shorten up my lengths of chain so that they're the same on both sides. And I did find out that I, you have to use the hook at the end, it's not the same size as the rest of the lengths. Then I'm going to use my We Are Memory Keepers hole punch on the small side and I'm going to punch new holes in the back that line up with my chain. I think my holes are about one eighth of an inch. And then we'll just reattach our chain to the wooden sign, just poking it through the holes and making sure that it's nice and tight on the front. And the only thing left to do is attach our bow on top. I'm going to use the floral wire that we used when we made the bow, twist it onto it securely and use hot glue as well to keep it from sliding right to left. And with that, this project is complete. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye y'all!